I am currently reading your recommended book, Coup d'Etat by Edward Luthwak, which mentions one of the preconditions for coup is economic backwardness. Whereas you and Dr. Luthwak in your podcast said a coup is possible in China, which is a country with the second highest GDP. So how is a coup possible in China then? Please explain. Excellent question. I love it. So yes, uh, that's what the book mentions, that one of the preconditions for a coup is economic backwardness. And I had this discussion with Dr. Luthwak in my podcast. It's available for you to watch. Brilliant podcast, brilliant conversation, brilliant uh, guest. So so we discussed the possibility of a coup in China and he went into some detail, uh, detail about how uh, a coup would be, a hypothetical coup in China would take place. So yes, he di- did agree that a coup is possible in China, but not in India. Right? So one of the conditions is economic backwardness. Now you're saying that uh, and you're rightly saying China is the country with the second highest GDP in the world. So how is a coup possible then? Because one of the conditions is economic backwardness. Well, we're talking about the condition of the people, not the condition of the country. China has a population of 1.4 billion people. If you take the overall GDP per uh, the annual GDP, you divide it by the number of people, the, and you, then you get the per capita GDP. It's not very high. It's not very high, right? So you can have a GDP of a bazillion dollars, but if your population is a gazillion, then bazillion divided by gazillion is the actual uh, uh, indicator of economic progress or backwardness. If your per capita GDP is like $2,000 per year, that's economic backwardness. In the case of China, it's no longer that much. It's around 10,000 or so, roughly, give or take. So it's not entirely economic backward, but it's not economically uh, prosperous. The people are not prosperous yet. And we don't know uh, the actual conditions inside China. Because even if you do this calculation of per capita GDP, you fail to take into account the possible inequality in society. For instance, in a country like China, which is a dictatorship, a one-party dictatorship, there will be a significant amount of economic inequality. A small percent of the, of the population will hold m- most of the money of the country or wealth of the country. So let's let's take the case of the US. In the US, approximately 2% of the population has more, has more than 60-70% or so of the entire country's wealth. These oligarchs, they call them billionaires in the US. When it's another, in another country, they call them oligarchs. So these American oligarchs, they hold, they are in possession of the majority of the country as well. There is this massive inequality, wealth inequality in the US. And there are many people who survive by doing two, three jobs a day. They sleep four hours a day and the rest of the time they're working just to put food on the table for the families. So I expect in China, the situation may be similar or even worse because the Chinese have tried to copy the American model of capitalism. So because of these facts, and, and you know, in China, these things are hidden. What you see in the media is the nice, nice version of China. What they want you to believe, they don't show you what they don't want you to see. There's so much about China that is hidden. You only see the official version on Twitter or wherever, wherever, wherever their social media accounts are. And it's it's strange that Twitter allows the Chinese to to, to pass on this misinformation at an industrial scale. Right? So what you see about China is not necessarily the, the truth about China. They are showing China as a beautiful, heavenly nation full of forests and orchards orchards and, and uh, glimmer, glimmering, glittering cities and wealth and all that. There's a whole different part of China that they're not showing you. Right? So there, that's the reason why a coup is very much possible in China. The Communist Party's Politburo and the, the top leadership will hold much of the country's wealth. Uh, there are many billionaires in China, but you know, every two or three weeks, a billion, billionaire disappears in China for whatever reason. So there's a whole lot that is swept under the carpet and hidden away from you. There are lots of systemic and other problems in China. And that is the reason why, despite the high GDP of the country and despite the reasonably okay per capita GDP, the truths may be something very different and most likely is very different. There is a great deal of poverty even now in China. They claim they have eliminated extreme poverty and all that. They also claim that there was no COVID in China for two years. Yeah? Do you believe that? So don't trust everything that you see. 
so that's why a coup is very much possible in china and there are two other conditions as well which i'm sure you have read about if you all don't know about it check out the book there are three pre- preconditions for a coup and in china all three are satisfied and that's why it's a country that is that is likely to have a coup in the future at least you know as long as the communist party is in power